Rich. I am your host and Tipton here today with Carly Myers, who you can find over at apopstudios.com. Uh, Carly helps women, or mostly women, yeah, Carly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who are no longer happy at work find their joy again through coaching. And she also has some really cool other things up her sleeve that I want to talk about today. So Carly, tell us a little bit about your Feeling Salty workshop. What is that? <laughs> I, I knew you were going to leave with that. So um, Feeling Salty is really all about how to you know, figure out what you want and have fun doing it in the process. So the name really comes from two things. You're going to walk in, you might be feeling pretty salty, uh, whether it's resentful or sad or angry or whatever those negative feelings are for you. Um, but we go in and we do a series of stream of consciousness, you know, answering a series of questions, so stream of consciousness writing. Um, then we do group discussion where we're really like getting, going really deep and getting vulnerable so that we can actually address whatever is going on under the surface. Um, and then we do this really fun thing, which is I guide you through a moving meditation where you're moving your hands in salt. And so by the end of this three hour workshop, You've gone through like anything that could have been holding you back, what it is that you want, what it is that you, you know, you tell yourself that you want, but it's actually what your parents told you you should want or society tells you you should want. Um, but you leave with actionable steps. And you also, you know, I know a lot of times we go to these like personal development seminars or events and we leave and we know exactly what it is that we have to do, but we have so much anxiety around it. And so that's what feeling salty kind of sets, that's how we kind of set ourselves apart and that you're leaving like, like you left, just left a yoga class where you're just like, ah, oh, yeah, this is nice. And I know I just need to do this one thing and then this and then that. So that's kind of an overview as to what feeling salty is. Yeah. So tell me, there's something about the salt, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so salt is actually associated with healing um, and keeping away like evil spirits, absorbing negative energy, you know, balancing out the positive and negative ions in a room. I mean, there are like so many things across different cultures that, that different cultures believe salt, how it serves you. Um, so I loved, as an artist, I work with salt. Um, and that's the reason I started working with it for its healing properties and um, its ability to balance that negative and po positive energy. So um, I just really loved what it was doing for me and my growth and healing process um, in my creative world. Um, and I've decided to bring that in and take that healing aspect that the pressure off, like you're not the one that has to get rid of anything. The salt's just going to do that for you. Um, so you can kind of relax your shoulders, get the brow, <laughs> unfurl that brow and kind of move forward. That's excellent. So Carly, you mentioned you were an artist. Tell me a little bit about your story your transition from being an art student, right? You were in school for art to today. What is What was that journey for you? Yeah, so I actually um, have a degree in fine arts and curatorial studies. Um, and so for those, of, I think most of you know what fine art is. Um, but for those of you who don't know what curatorial studies is, um, I would be that person doing at a museum, at a gallery, doing all of the research on the artist, the piece, um, why they're doing what they're doing, and then mounting a show for the general public kind of as an educational, you know, experience. Um, and I was, you know, when I was in school, I had this like constant struggle between the two. Like, do I do arts administration? Do I do fine art? Um, my fine art was really about the healing process, about meditation, about finding yourself. Um, it's like this whole personal development piece. And this arts, arts administration piece felt like it was the thing that was going to pay the bills. And so I had this like chronic, like I, would, I won't even use the word chronic because I remember going to my advisor so many times. She's probably like, Carly, like stop. <laughs> no, no more. And I just had that chronic struggle between the two. Um, and here to find out like there was no struggle at all. This, this arts administration piece for me was just how do you run things? Like how do you, you know, what is the research behind why you're doing what you're doing? And how do you run a business? <laughs> and how do you move forward and, and take this um, art creativity, this coaching aspect, you know, all of this stuff and, and meld the two. So after years of kind of like struggling, it all kind of settled in. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of a history. I think the broader history here is that, um, you know, I had personally a childhood trauma. And so 
I really felt that like my purpose on this planet was to help other people to share my story with the hopes that it would connect with someone else. And so I knew that that was the direction I needed to head. Um, so that kind of leads me where, where I am today as a coach, um, as a facilitator of workshops, helping people move past their fears, past the anxiety, the stress, you know, chronic fatigue, whatever, um, and take that actionable step. Because I know for me, I struggled with anxiety and chronic night terrors, and I needed something. And so my career suffered, you know, things, things in all areas of my life suffered because I wasn't, I was so scared of taking that next step. Um, so what I really do now as a coach is I help people get out of that so that they can take the next step. Okay, so when you when you did the feeling salty workshops, you had mentioned that there are actionable steps that people walk away with. Can you give me a little uh, some examples of maybe what people leave with when they work with you? Yeah, so I have the benefit of having this really fresh in my mind because I just did one on Thursday, um, and so I had I think on Thursday I had three people that are coming to mind, and the first thing the first person that I really want to tell you about. She is killer. Um, but the thing for her was when she first met me was that she just got laid off. She had a like 10, 15 year career in finance. Um, and she like knew, thought she knew her direction and where she was going. But then all of a sudden, like everything came to a halt. And then she had this kind of crisis um, where she didn't know which way to go. She didn't, she wasn't overly ha happy at her job to begin with. So it's kind of like, okay, now I'm at a crossroads. Do I work on the thing that I'm most passionate about, which relates back to what I've been doing, but is slightly different? Or do I continue just applying for jobs and go for this, go for that, go for this? And so she's, for the, for the last few months since February, she's been doing that same struggle that I went through, right? Like, which way do I go? Oh my God, chronic, just indecision. And so what we left there, you know, after going through, what is it that you actually want? What don't you want? Um, what are the challenges right now? Really going through a lot of that stuff, she left with the decision. Actually, we, we, I made her stand up and say, like, this is, she decided, and I was like, you're going to stand up and say this with power. And um, so she decided for sure. She's like, I am a consultant. This is what she was going to do. So rather than work within a company, she wanted to make big change outside of a company. So her first step, although small, um, that was a big first step, just deciding, right? But the first step she was leaving with was, okay, now I need to figure out what my one-liner is. Who am I helping? What am I doing? Uh, you know, just that like basic umbrella was her first step. And then you have other people, um, like uh, the gentleman that attended on Thursday who came in. He also is on, disengaged with his job and he wants to start an entrepreneurial venture. But he's at this place where he's dealing with the pressures of anxiety and depression and this negative self-talk where it's just self-sabotaging over and over and over again. He finally gets somewhere and then the voices start, right? And so for him, the first step was, you know, just really doing the, get, there was three actually. His first step was doing his daily gratitudes so that negative voice couldn't be like, yeah, but this, yeah, but that, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, right? Um, doing his affirmations, which is like, I am a badass or like I am, you know, a crazy, amazing business owner, um, even if it feels like you're lying to yourself. And his third step, which I think is, is his most important step, and it, as for many of us, including myself, was getting support mm -hmm. so that those daily gratitudes he's sending to someone and they're looking at it to make sure they're actually gratitudes, <laughs> right? Because sometimes we'll do the, um, I'm so grateful that I packed myself a healthy meal today, but I still have 50 pounds to lose, right? And we're like, no, that's not what it's about. It's about the real gratitude, not the, yeah, but this, yeah, but that. Um, so for him, the simple action step was to do that, do the gratitudes and the affirmations every day, just write them down, have a peer look over them. Oh, yeah. Tiki's in the background. Uh, that's my kitty Tiki. Uh, <laughs> um, and then it could be as simple as like, okay, now we're going to, you know, someone else who is there who wants to start a, wanted to start a blog. Um, it was just a passion to bring the passion back into her life. She, she just didn't have it. She lost it 20 years ago. She doesn't know where it went. And we ended up, you know, boiling it all down to the fact that she hasn't written in 20 years. Oh. And, you know, 
her her predominant like language, like the way she communicates with the world is not through her voice, it's through her written word. And so her first step was write a hundred words. That's it, a hundred words and see where that goes. And um, with her specifically, she we had her write a hundred words. I got an email the very next morning. She ended up writing like 300 words. You know, all she had to write was a hundred words and she's like, oh my gosh, once I got started, it was so great and moved forward. And so, I think with feeling salty, it's really like an introductory for a lifestyle change, but also it's this micro bravery thing where it's a task that takes 10 minutes or less um, that helps you move forward and move closer to your goal and isn't going to overwhelm you. I love that micro bravery because I can, I can do this much brave, but maybe not. <laughs> That's yeah. Um, yeah. I want to just emphasize something that you said because I think it's so important. Um, and that's, I feel like, especially those of us who are entrepreneurially inclined, have a really hard time asking for the support that you were encouraging your clients to get. It's so hard, right? Because we think we're so self-sufficient, we're so driven, we're so ambitious that it's hard to step back and say, you know what, I could really use some help here. Um, and so I think it's awesome. And that's, that's one of the, the takeaways for him, because that's, that, can, that can be a huge hurdle that once you get past the asking for help, it's amazing. It's amazing what can come your way. Oh, uh, I can tell you a good story. Oh. And uh, <laughs> so um, this is a personal story. So when I first started my business, I wasn't making, I was making a little money. Um, I wasn't making too, too much. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I need some extra support. I don't. So I just started looking around. I was like doing a bunch of sales calls with a bunch of different coaches. Like I was like, I'm just going to steal their technique. Right. I ended up on this call with my current business coach. and. So I, then I end up at uh, an event where Anne and I met, actually. And at the time, I was making, I think I was making $13,000 a year. I was not making any money. And I was, but I was like, I'm going, I'm, I'm changing my life. Like, like this, enough is enough. And so this business coach offers a program. And I'm like, no way in hell I'm going to do this. No way. No way. Absolutely. She's, she's great. She's totally in line with me. I need to work with her. But no not happening. But the thing is, is I, I ended up getting, <laughs> getting my credit card out that day and putting a $2,000 deposit on it. I made it. So just for context here, this program is $12,000 a year, or it might be a little bit more than that. Um, and, you were it was, but, and I was making $13,000 a year. Yeah. Yeah. I put my credit card down and it was like, you know, the very next day I was like calling people. I was like, how do I go? I want my money back. What do I do? Get me out of this, you know? And they're like, no, no, you're not going to do this. You're going to do the program. And I could have just like, you know, lost 2000, the $2,000 deposit and went on my life and just been like, you know, regretting that decision for the next, you know, however long it took me to pay it off and beyond. But because I got that, first of all, they were like, no, you're doing this. You committed to it. You want this. You're going to do it. They didn't, get, they didn't give me my money back, so I was like, I'm going to do it. And because I got that support, even guys, even if it's like a stretch for you, I mean, that was a stretch for me. That was more than a stretch. It was like my entire life on the line. I ended up tripling my income in like no time. Like it's in like, what, like two months, right? So like, not two months. That was 13. That was in my business. So that was my, my day job that was paying me that. So I, was tri I tripled my business income. And I ended up putting in my notice like a year later, putting like, it was just like crazy. Like I ended up making so much more money, was able to pay for this stuff, you know, this program cash. And it was all because I was just took that leap of faith. Now I'm not saying everyone go out and like buy a coaching program that is your annual income. <laughs> but I am saying that sometimes it's just the support that you need to get you to the next level, even if it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's a great segue. Uh, Carly, you have a, a free gift for us, yes? I do. So for those of you who, you know, want the support, you want to get an idea of like who I am and how I can help and feel like you've tried everything. I feel like that is the key here. Like you've done everything. You've, you know, read this book, saw that talk, went to this event, did that. Um, I take a really different creative approach to help you move forward. So I have created a free gift. If you're feeling disengaged at work, if you feel like you know that there's more, if you know that there's more for you um, in this lifetime, then I want to give you this free gift, how to go from dream 
gutting your day to loving your day. Because I think that is the first micro bravery step. Um, and in that, you're just going to find a moving meditation, a creative moving meditation to clear the fog and the anxiety so that you yourself can maybe figure out that second micro bravery step. Um, so you can find that at apopstudios.com slash um, love your day. And um, just enter your email and it'll, it'll get sent right to your inbox. Perfect. Perfect. I think that's going to be a great resource um, for people who are kind of in that, in that place that they need some, some help. And I, Carly, I've, I've, you know, looked at some of your workbooks and stuff before and it, it's really good stuff, really good stuff. So, well, thank you you. for being on the show today. I I so appreciate you and your, um, your little guest there. who's. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much. And um, yeah, appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for having me. And it's always so great to just have a, a really like intellectually stimulating you know, conversation um, and just catching up on what's going on. So thank you.